With 100 days to go to the U.S. election, polls show that President Donald Trump is languishing as the pandemic takes its toll. But analysts expect surprises. According to various polls, Joe Biden has built a commanding and enduring lead over Donald Trump, whose path to victory has narrowed considerably in the months since the coronavirus pandemic began. Trump's fortunes appear increasingly tied to the trajectory of a public health crisis he has failed to contain, with the death toll past 140. And the economy in turmoil. A Washington Post ABC News poll this month showed that Biden, far ahead of Trump, with 55% to 40% amongst registered voters. That contrasted with in March when Biden and Trump were locked in a near tie as the virus was just beginning to spread. The same poll found Trump's approval ratings had crumbled to 39%, roughly the same share of the electorate that approved of his response to the outbreak, while 60% disapproved. Especially troubling for the president are a new spate of polls that suggest he is losing his edge on the economy, formerly Biden's greatest vulnerability. We have asked international relations expert John Stremlau to join us via Skype for more on this. Professor, very good evening to you. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to The Globe. Thank you very much. I'm glad to talk to you. Now, just three months ago, President Trump seemed to be enjoying a quite considerable amount of support, even while the coronavirus was ravaging the United States. What seems to have changed? Well, a number of things have changed, and you indicated that in your intro. The, the virus really has been mishandled when you think that there are 16 million cases globally and 4 million in the United States, which only has 4% of the population. And the Center for Disease Control and Prevention estimates that the number of cases could be underreported by as, uh, as a factor of 10. So there could be 40 million cases. Uh, and the death rate now is, is, is in excess of 146,000. So that Trump is seen, and particularly by seniors, citizens who are most vulnerable, and they were his one of his key bases. Uh, in Florida, for example, 13 percent of the population are over 65, but 80 percent of the of the victims of COVID are are over uh, 65. So um, there's a lot of unhappiness about that. There's unhappiness about uh, deploying these uh, uh, paratroopers, or I mean these these shock troopers, to Portland, Oregon, and not being responsive to Black Lives Matter, which has been for me a real revelation because Black Lives Matter didn't really have traction until the George Floyd murder uh, back in May. And so you have um, a, a number of things uh, occurring simultaneously, but that's uh, only part of the story. There are so many uncertainties between now and Election Day, including the Republicans' tendency to suppress voters, uh, Trump's own w unwillingness to accept the results, he says in principle, which has never been done before in an election. People always say, I'll accept the outcome, whatever the authorities say is the winner. Uh, he said, well, maybe, maybe yes, maybe no. So we have things that are really unsettling. What does that mean, though? Does it mean that uh, he's now accepting the fact that there is a possibility that he might not make it? Well, he's not accepting that, but he says that uh, he reminds uh, Chris Wallace of Fox News that in, in 2016, he won in the Electoral College, but he said that Hillary Clinton got her popular vote by fraudulent means. There's no evidence evidence of that at all. None, absolutely none. And he just makes these things up. And and so if he was to say, well, look at this, this election uh, says I've lost, but I really didn't because there were all sorts of things done, done corruptly, there will be some in his base that will believe that. But the question is, what does the Constitution and the authorities uh, who supposedly uh, hold the president account like the court uh, does the president uh, here in South Africa, we don't really know. You know, the courts are very politicized in the U.S., and particularly if, if Judge Bader Ginsburg was to die between now and the election, that could rally his base to be sure that you get right-wingers uh, stacking the court, because there's a five-to-four majority, it would be a six-to-four uh, majority. So, um, I mean, a six-to-three majority. So that uh, there, there, there are real uncertainties here.
And he's apparently even trying a new tactic, that of humility. And, uh, you know, he's even more reflective um, in, his, in one interview that he conducted with the TV station there, saying that he often regrets his outbursts on Twitter. Will this tactic work? <laughs> well, I think at this stage, people either believe Donald Trump for all of his lying or they don't believe Donald Trump, but they either like him for other reasons or they're critical of him for what I would regard as very good reasons, because I do think he's an incompetent president and uh, an indecent man. Uh, but that's my personal opinion, based on my study of American presidents in the past. And, and in my lifetime, I've, no, I've known or worked for a couple of them. And, and uh, I, I just never see anything like this administration for disorganization, impetuousness, and unpredictability, but also lack of professionalism. So, you know, it, it just depends whether you want to take whatever he says that comes into his head seriously or not. And I think by this stage in his presidency, most of us who have seen the facts and understand where he is deviating from them with abandon uh, won't be kidded by any, any change of view that he has uh, now that he's going to wear a mask, for example. Can you imagine politicizing a mask wearing? Every scientist in the world says you should wear a mask, but Donald Trump is Donald Trump. And what seems to be the main factor that has catapulted, uh, you know, uh, Joe Biden to lead the race? Well, the question is, is it pro-Biden or is it anti-Trump? And it seems to be more anti-Trump now, but there is really something happening in the country. And we saw it in the 2018 election with the, re with the Democrats winning over the House. I've seen polling in the last 24 hours that seems to suggest that um, the, the Democrats could, could, could win a majority in the Senate, indeed as many as 60 seat majority, which would mean it would be filibuster proof. If you had Biden in the White House, the, the Democrats in control of both houses of Congress, you could have a, a situation comparable to when Franklin Roosevelt took power in 1932. And he was able to put in the New Deal and do sorts of re really, really progressive things for the good of the country and for the good of uh, of. Uh, um, of his party. And, and I would hope that um, that uh, Joe Biden would get that opportunity. Um, Obama had it briefly in 2008, but then lost the Senate in 2010. And, and uh, the rest is history, as you know. You know, we are basing this analysis on polls. I mean, we're not there yet. The election is about 100 days from now. Uh, so the the big question now is uh, we should rather, uh, you know, lavish our attention to the credibility of polls. Should these polls and experts be trusted? Well, uh, the polls are suggestive, but uh, they're not really indicative. The only poll that matters is on Election Day. But I do think you're raising a very important question about how South Africans and the South African government think about positioning themselves going forward. Joe Biden, if he does become president, will be beholden to African-Americans. And he's had a long history of involvement and interest in Africa. I'm attending uh, 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 one of his uh, advisory groups uh, uh, holding a discussion about African policy. Uh, later next this week, uh, Tuesday. And I think that um, it would be a major sea change for U.S. relations with Africa. You can argue with Americans, but there aren't many Americans to even from the government to really argue with these days because Trump is so disinterested in Africa. So I, I think this would really um, be a, an important point for some planning about the contingency that does seem to be from the polling more likely, which is that Joe Biden would be the next president. Uh, if it doesn't happen, well, then you'll have to readjust like we did in 2017. Yeah. And what do you make of this likelihood that President Trump could lose the key states such as uh, Texas and Arizona, which have traditionally been the strongholds of the Republican Party? I mean, what could have caused this? I mean, we know that uh, the, the, the rate of coronavirus in these states is quite high. Could that be uh, the, the reason that President Trump uh, is uh, seeing waning support in those states? But as, as I analyze it, that's absolutely the reason. And, uh, you know, they, there, there was this let's open up, let's open up. But they did none of the preparatory work. We've had problems in this country, but, but President Ramaphosa and his advisors informed us all of why the science dictated that you should uh, lock down and be very careful in the hopes of flattening the curve. 
And Trump sort of flirted with that idea briefly. Cynics will say that when he discovered that African Americans and others who he doesn't really like and are not in his base uh, were, were, were most hit by this, then he changed his tune a bit. But in fact, what happened is in Florida and in Arizona and in, and in Texas, the Republican strongholds, they're now getting cremated by the, by the virus. And a lot of people have uh, been shaken by that fact, particularly uh, those in his base in the, in the senior citizen cohort and uh, the suburbs. Can the United States post this election recover from the economic turmoil and uh, the coronavirus pandemic that has ravaged the country's economy? Well, the big question mark, of course, is when is the vaccine and who gets access to it and, and how is that handled? But for, for, for now, yes, I think that uh, 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 a, a Democratic president who is willing to uh, pull the country together and move forward could uh, get the economy back on track because the virus, the vaccine will be coming in 2021. Um, but again, I don't like the, the, uh, the, the vaccine nationalism of the of the uh, Biden administration. The one thing that this virus shows us is we are one global community and we ought to have the vaccines distributed according to need and, and at an affordable price. All right, Professor Stremlau, great chatting to you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. That was Professor John Stremlau speaking to us live via Skype.